phonics from Mary's soul that the energy density of the voice here in D-sharp was 158.63 hertz. So we find consistently that when you're speaking from your heart, it shows up in your voice and you can measure it. Okay, in this case again, 158.65 hertz was the energy density in this spectrum analysis of the voice corresponding to the missing frequency or the present frequency in the heart. Again, 161, near 160 cycles per second. So we have all these ways to confirm that the heart and the voice are in phase and you can repair a missing heart with the voice and vice versa. I want to show you one more little concept here. And by the way, this is the Biosonica website. Or you can just find it in the Biosonica, Biosonics e-group. This is Mary Soul's work in Spain. But I want to show you one more little concept to give you the idea here. So Mary Soul is spectrum analyzing a voice here and notices that the energy dispersion is not fractal. Most of the energy of this voice is stuck in one frequency. So if one person is talking to you in one frequency all the time, you get a little bit bored because they don't change frequency when they're talking, right? So there's very little feeling in that voice, right? So you want a voice to be harmonically inclusive and not harmonically exclusive. But I want to tell you how we heal this person's voice. This is before and this is after. Mary Soul calculated the missing frequency of this voice here. She calculated that wavelength musically multiplied by powers of two got a wavelength of color in light, went out to the yard in the hot Mediterranean, South Spain sun, tilted the angle of the, of the prism, and so the guy is sitting inside the room, and there's a rainbow going up across his face with a blindfold on, and when the rainbow has the exact right color by calculation in his eyeballs, she takes the blindfold off, counts two minutes, and then says, now let's spectrum analyze your voice again. And we got this. And this was replicable. You could do it multiple times. You could replace a missing voice harmonic with the light and back and forth. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is something I would like you to really take home with you tonight. Mary Soul explained to me that this only works if you start with real sunlight. And I would like you to understand why. This is the clue to the key why when you go into your children's classroom and you install warm pink fluorescent lights, you can measure the intention span go way down. It's very measurable. Now, if you yank out those god-awful fluorescent lights and install sunlight, you can measure the attention span go way up. I would like you to understand the physics. The physics is that any wave that embeds in the sun has the possibility of fusion. You get it? So if you're out of phase with the sun, you're toast. It's called pair sun all I tie, right? Have some personality, right? So the point is, the point is that this is why Tutankhamun and the same guy Quetzalcoatl, who later became Jesus, all taught a solar calendar. The sun's in there burping magnetic fields in the symmetry necessary to ignite DNA. It's called the Mayan calendar, but it's just a map of the I Ching, which is the codons of DNA. So the, so the Mayan calendar, by mapping the solar flares, was mapping how the sun was igniting DNA. So the sun, because of the spectral emission lines of hydrogen, being the physics of fusion, which Balmer series is a log function of golden ratio, so the sun's wavelengths are embeddability in essence. So if you want to teach fusion, literally how to embed, you teach a solar calendar because that is the physics of how you embed in the sun. And the sun is the only being with enough gravity, inertial escape velocity out of here. So most souls, when they die, they don't get past the Van Allen belts. But if you really want to get out of here, you do this thing called the Amenti Principle. The Amenti Principle is the physics that says that if you get enough bliss in your soul group, the ultraviolet tantric excitement, ignition, cocoon of that group becomes navigable through the sun. That's the happily ever after, yeah? So what you do is you use your landscape, which is a zodiac star map, like a magnetic lens for accelerating your group bliss through the sun. Leading Mother Nature's silver seed to a new home in the sun. Right? So that's what Tutankhamun prophecies, the best solar physics on the planet, book by Maurice Cotterell, is about. Okay, 
It's about the geometry of magnetism to make for the possibility of ignition based on the phase map of the heart of the sun. Yeah? So that's, that's what harmonic theory is about. Harmonic theory is getting the waves in the symmetry necessary to create that compression that can accelerate soul groups. You know? I, uh, I, knew this, um, I knew this guy, his name was Max in Hawaii, and he was a famous healer. And there's pictures of, of ultraviolet little beings around him when he does all his miraculous healing, and he's a scanner, and he remembered growing up as a Draco in China, and his ancestral family is literally draconian, right? Now, the interesting thing about Max is that he's had about, I think, seven medically documented flatline, dead, just totally dead experience. He's, he's had near-death experiences seven times, right? So he's doing Groundhog Day with trying to die and get it right, right? <laughs> now, why would you do Groundhog Day with the death process? You need practice, right? Well, so how do you practice dying? Well, the idea is, if you're unconsciously aware that you, if you're consciously aware that your DNA is not going to make it through the solar maximum, you practice dying, right? So some people function better with dead lines, right? And so the sun provides that for us by providing a pressure wave, a maximum. It is not that the sun wants to toast most of the DNA on the planet. The, ton, the sun, by nature of its experience of orgasm gravitationally, is needing the steering mechanism. How many million children sang together on the Earth healing days, and on those times, twice, they measured the effect on the solar flares. So the gene pool has the capacity to fabricate the gravity wave that could, in fact, steer the sun. And this is, in fact, survival-related for our gene pool, yeah? This is called the Harmonic Module Project. And, in fact, the software to link hearts over the Internet is already in the demo on the website, heartcoherence.com, right? So that eventually we'll be able to link a million hearts, right? And show the phase lock and create the harmonic module. It is true that almost all the solar astronomic books like Genesis, Genesis and the Typhon series and the wonderful book Uriel's Machine and uh, the Sipapu concept in Hopi, they all end with the comet is coming, right? And in fact, they, they projected in... Um, Hale Bop dragging in a parasitic sun cruisers infested with Dracos now circulating in the orbit between Sun and Mercury. No matter how you look at it, they use the comets as towing machines for artificial planetoids. In fact, the very origin of the word uh, apocalypse from supposedly came from the when they said the orbit of Hale Bop had such elegant mathematics that it, it in itself was evidence of intent. And the, the word apocalypse came from the fourth Horus man of the epic of the ellipse. Apoc ellipse. And the ellipse was from Horus, that epic predicted. And in fact, you can see those sun cruisers, which supposedly are filled with Dracos around the, the orbit of Mercury. So you have lots of description about the effect of comets on the planet Earth. And even the total recall was about a comet's miscalculated trajectory costing Mars its atmosphere. And in Uriel's machine, they're saying that the doorway to the caves predicts the angle of that comet in, uh, all over Europe, that the angle at which the caves became survivable predicted the angle of the splash of the gravity field of those comets. So yeah, that's all over the literature. Even in, and this is, might be a good metaphor for the pure principle, the movie Fifth Element. So in effect, the fifth element was love, but love was that which created a gravity field able to steer an incoming star. Right? So the ability to create leverage on gravity fields determines the survival of the gene pool, really. And so my belief would be that there's a wide variety of things which will test the gene pool for its ability to stabilize its own gravity bubble. I would give you the geomantic suggestion. Here's a geomantic suggestion. If you were flying by a local solar system like ours,